38 North is a program of the U.S. Korea Institute at Johns Hopkins University dedicated to providing analysis of events in and around North Korea. Their blog is authored by its faculty and guest commentators, including Dr. Rudiger Frank, a longtime North Korea expert and a professor of East Asian studies at the University of Vienna. Dr. Frank was educated at Kim Il-sung University in North Korea and has been visiting the reclusive state for the past 24 years. Well, I recently had a chance to sit down with him. I started by asking him whether bilateral relations between China and North Korea remain strong. China's geopolitical interests have not changed at all. For them, North Korea is still an important country. In many uh, ways, it's a buffer zone. It's part of the Korean Peninsula. It's a place where they actually compete with the Americans. It's also a place where China is showing off to other countries around how it treats an ally which is why they can't pressurize the North Koreans too much. On the other hand, China is trying to become a responsible member of the international community. So, of course, they do have to, every once in a while, voice some criticism about uh, the North Korean nuclear program and human rights. And besides, China is very concerned about the nuclear program because I believe that actually the main target of North Korea's nuclear program is China. China is the biggest threat to North Korea. The biggest physical threat. I mean, it's a big country right next to North Korea. There's a border, 1,400 kilometers. So if any country wanted to invade North Korea, it would be the easiest thing to do for China. More than 90% of North Korea's trade is with China. So North Korea is totally dependent economically on the Chinese. And as you know, that makes them feel very uncomfortable. And they don't want the Chinese to use that power that they've got. And having uh, nuclear weapons is one option of uh, preventing the Chinese from actually exercising the power that they've got. I think it's more or less our Western self-centeredness that we believe whatever the North Koreans do is about us. But if you look at it realistically, you know, I think the nuclear weapons are as much meant to deter China as they are to deter Japan and the United States. North Korea's nuclear program, your prospects on that? Well, it's pretty obvious that the North Koreans will not give up the nuclear program anytime soon because it's the reason why we are talking about it. In other words, that's why people are interested in North Korea. Otherwise, it would just be another dictatorship somewhere at the end of the world, from a Western perspective at least. But thanks to the nuclear program, it is elevated to that status. It's one of the few successes that the North Korean leadership can present to its own people. So why should they trade it away? Now it got even worse because it's the... Uh, kind of what Kim Jong-il passed down to his uh, son Kim, Kim Jong-un. So how can Kim Jong-un then easily give it away? What we can do, however, and this is uh, what frustrates me a little bit, because not much is happening, rather than talking about the North Koreans dismantling the whole nuclear program at once, why aren't we talking about non-proliferation? Non why aren't we talking about nuclear security, like preventing an accident like it happened even in Fukushima in highly developed Japan? And these are issues that the North Koreans are willing to talk about. I spoke to them. Uh, they uh, signaled very strongly that, yes, of course, we can talk about these things. But as long as we start every meeting by saying, first, you have to completely denuclearize, I don't think we will achieve any progress on those uh, quite essential issues. So your opinion is that the rest of the world should go about progressing talks with North Korea upon consent that North Korea is a nuclear weapon state? The problem is that we said publicly we were never going to do that. So in a way we dug a hole for ourselves and now we don't know how to get out of it. That's always a problem. And as a scholar it's not my job to find a diplomatic or political way out of that hole. But all I can say is that I don't believe uh, it will lead us, it will uh, help us to pursue this all or nothing strategy. I think we should look at issues that can be resolved and that they are that are still in our interest like non-proliferation and nuclear security.